So here's a problem that's confusing. And the reason why it's confusing to students is because I think a lot of times students like to approach a problem like this the way that they would approach a problem if you had the vertex. And notice that we don't have the vertex here, right? So when usually, usually when we had the vertex, we didn't need to understand that relationship between the vertex and you know the focus or the vertex and the directrix, basically understanding our value of P. But in this case, we, we kind of switch up those relationships and we say, all right, now we only have the focus and the directrix. Like what's the relationship between them and how does the vertex fall within that relationship? So again, just like everything else that I kind of explain when we're trying to write the equation of our parabola is, you know, I want you to plot the information because if you can plot the information, then we can have a better idea and understanding of what it is we are trying to do or what it is we're trying to look at. And a lot of times I think this gets confusing for students is because they don't plot the information. Like the focus is a point. So plot the point. So we have one, seven. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. There you go. And I'm going to put a nice little F here. Now, the problem with the directrix is it's not a point, right? Directrix is a line. So I'm going to go ahead and draft this, graph this directrix here. I have a Y is equal to three. So I'm going to go up to three, one, two, three, right? And I'm going to draw a nice little line. Now, I'm going to use this as a nice little dash line, okay? But um, that is going to be your directrix Y equals three. So we need to understand what is that relationship here between the focus and the directrix? Or what do we know about where the vertex is going to be in relationship to the vertex focus and the directrix? Well, that all comes into our understanding of P. Remember the value of P is the distance from your vertex to the focus. The opposite of P is the distance from your vertex to your directrix. So besides the direction, right? P to the focus is positive or to the focus is P and to the directrix is opposite of P. The distance is exactly the same. So another way that we could say that is that the vertex is exactly in the center of our, between our focus and our directrix. Now again, the focus is a point and our directrix is, um, is a line. But again, like you can see, like what we're doing is we're trying to find the middle. We're trying to find the middle between the Y values. So you could use the distance formula if you wanted to between the Y values or find the midpoint, right? So you could seven plus three is 10 divided by two is five, right? You could say, oh, okay, so go over one and then one, two, three, four, five. And you can see like, yeah, that makes sense, right? Because there's two units up to the focus and two units down to get to the directrix. So our vertex is in between the focus and the directrix. That's what's so important. And that's what a lot of, that's what confuses a lot of students is because they try to want to go with this relationship between like vertex and focus, um, or if you had like the vertex and the directrix. But again, now we can just relate back to exactly what we have. Like we know the value of P right? Which is going to be two in this case, because again, we're going up. So I can say P is going to equal a two. So now what I can do is go ahead and write the equation. Now, again, this is going to be a vertical um, parabola, right? So it's going to be opening up in this example. So therefore um, I'm going to have, let's see, X minus an H quine squared is equal to a four P times a Y minus a K. All right. So again, our focus here, not going to use F or H or K. We're going to use our vertex, which, well, what is the coordinates of the vertex? It's over one, up one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be one comma five. So I can now say that is my H and that is my K and we have our P. So let's just go ahead and now and plug and chug them. So I have an X minus a one quine squared equals a four times a two times a Y minus a five. Now we can just go ahead and simplify this. X minus one quine squared is equal to eight times a Y minus five. Now it's time to go and check out the next video I have for you here.